Hi, hello, how are you? Good good morning, or good mid-morning. It's probably about 11 a.m. Welcome back to the channel. And if you haven't been here before, thanks for stopping by. Uh, my name is Patricia, and that is Bogey. And we live full-time in our road truck travel van. Um, Right now we are in the Georgia, North Georgia mountains. I was in Florida, living in Florida, in an apartment for quite some time. And I was given the opportunity of a van. So I took it. And um, here we are. My life in Florida was very, very, I think it was killing me, killing my soul. Not me, but my soul. And I think I was also at the very end there, right before it was time to leave, I got really sick. And I know that was due to stress. And I had been stressed out. I'd been there like 13 years. I was probably stressed. I'm gonna say even from the beginning, on and off for the first three, f it's not even true. So much happened. It was terrible. <laughs> anyway, I'm out of there now. And I'm in, I prefer like the, the Four Seasons. And so financially, this was as far as I can get. So we are working in a box store, a big box store and we work four days and three days we have off. So this is today is the first day of three. I was having brake troubles for, I don't know, for probably since the second week I was here, I got here the first week of October and it was very subtle to the point where you were just like, is there really a problem? Um, but as the weeks progressed, it showed itself more. And I did go as soon as I thought, you know, it could be a potential problem. I did go to a place that does brakes and tires and oil changes and all that. And they checked out all my brakes and all the brake pads were good, which made me think that it was all in my head. Um, and then two weeks went by and everything was sort of, it was okay, like nothing was really popping up. And then toward the, uh, like the last couple of days, say of those two weeks, after I had stopped at the, the uh, break place, that noise popped up again. So I right away brought it back. And from I guess what I was describing, he looked at all the calipers, the brake calipers, and one was leaking, it was a leaky, a slow leak. So that was last week. And my appointment was for this Thursday. One, because this was their first appointment, and two, because this is my pay week. I'm looking at a spider. It's a tiny, tiny spider. I'm gonna let him be for a minute. Um, so this week was really stressful from, la from last Thursday to this Thursday because I could only, technically, you know, I was mostly, well, the days that I had off, I had to stay in the area that I was, you know, that I was in. And then with work, I usually rotate between two towns where I sleep and I could only stay in the one town and I just, I don't want to be so obvious. And, um, but anyway, it's all fixed. We got it fixed this morning. It's unbelievable that this place just charged me a hundred dollars to change a brake caliper and, you know, I don't know. I find that very reasonable and back home, well, back in Florida, 
it's like you can't get away with any type of mechanic work for at least three, four hundred if it's something simple. And even like their brake, um, when they redo the brakes, brake, repl brake replacement, if they replace all the brakes and rotors, it's like 300-ish, 325, he said, for my van. And I was like, huh? Because that doesn't sound like something I would have, you know, pay somewhere else. But he's been really friendly. The owner was very friendly with me since, you know, the first time I brought it there. And all the guys are really friendly. And I don't know. I'm going to have to get rid of the spider because he's freaking me out. And he's making a freaking web. Ah, oh, damn it. I should have told him about my... I have a brake light out. Hold, please. I have a brake light out, and I specifically waited till today. Because I figured they would change it. And, um, if I asked them to. And, oh, right, you gotta go, spider. Spider, go. Um... Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to do it myself. It just looks real complicated because there's so much stuff back there. And I think it's on my side. And the tire is on my side. And there's no way that I can lower it. I'm sure if I go back, they'll do it for me. <sighs> okay, anyway. I am just a few hop, skips, and jumps away from where I dump my tanks. So today is get the brakes fixed, dump my tanks fresh fill up on fresh water get propane I tried to get propane during the work week but I the place I normally go they lost the piece to that fits the RVs then I went to the KOA and their piece wouldn't fit mine then I went to um, then I went to a van is pulling up then I went to, oh, this actual propane place where they service homes and everything. And, I don't know, Lay's rude. <laughs> she was rude, and I know it's not my problem, and I didn't really take it personally, but I don't want to give people money, give people my business when they're rude. The other places are so nice. Um, so I have to go to a place in the other town where I sleep, you know, the opposite town where I sleep at. I said there was two towns, so I have to go to that town, the one I haven't been able to go to. And they have a tractor, whatever, forgot the name of the store. Anyway. They're all good to go to fill up on propane. I called them and made sure they had all their all their bits. So, all right. I am not sure if I'm gonna film the dumping of the tanks. I don't feel so, one, I don't feel really great today. And uh, two, I'm just getting used to like the filming. And sometimes it's a lot of work when I can just go in and dump, you know, take me a few minutes where I have to set up the camera and all that. So I'm not sure yet. Eventually I want to do those things, but I think it's because I don't feel good. All right, I'll take you along on my three days off kind of have tentative plans for tomorrow and the next day, but I'm not going to share because I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, see you in a bit.
So I just went to Aldi's and bought a few things. Some baby spinach, because I make this like soup with uh, ramen and mushrooms and scallions. And I have like frozen shrimp that I throw in there. It's mushrooms. I bought a kombucha because since I left the kava bar and I don't get my favorite tea anymore, I get that when I can, the kombucha. I got a Greek yogurt because in the mornings I put uh, Greek yogurt with cut up apples and then Bogey's main meal for breakfast. And uh, yesterday I bought a can of pumpkin at Walmart because I just happened to be there. Which I'm going to start adding to his evening meal. I got these because I haven't snacked on anything in a while that's crappy. And maybe these are better because they're the Aldi's brand or somewhat better, but who knows. Um, there's my pot stickers. I needed oil, got oil. Oops, oil. And I got more apples because I don't want to run out because that's a staple between his food and sometimes we share at night like peanut butter and apples. I got scallions to go in that soup I mentioned and probably to chop up for the pot stickers. And I got some chicken because I still have a salad, bag salad, Caesar salad that I haven't eaten. And um, I like to put chicken in it. So yeah, I don't have my microphone on. Duh. You probably hear the fan. That's the fan in the background. But I'm tired. I didn't sleep well because whenever I have something to do, I just don't sleep well the night before. And something to do meaning I had the appointment for the, for the tires. When I don't have something that I need to do, I'm a, I'm a, I've been sleeping bad for a long time, but since I've come to this area, my sleeping's a lot better. So I'm happy about that, but it's still not perfect, but that's okay. It's better and I feel more rested than I used to feel. And I still have to do laundry and it's like maybe two o'clock-ish, 1.45, two o'clock. So I think I'm gonna find like a park and just go chill and then I'll go do laundry. And then I also have to figure out what my next two days looks like. So, sorry about the noise. Um, I'll see you guys in a bit. Hi guys. So after a long winter's nap, not really, fall nap, um, I decided to get something to eat. I was like... Yeah, I was really, it just seems like the day after the four days of work, I'm just super tired, which is nice that I have two more days because usually I'm okay with those two days, but it's hard to get stuff done and I'm sweating because I closed the windows and it's hot in here and I just ate something, and, but um, I fed bogey. I was saying to myself today as I was doing my chores, what a smooth day it's been, other than the belly aching, literally and figuratively. Um, I, I was saying what a, you know, how smooth everything's going after all these, I was like, okay. Now I'll just, I, that's when I didn't feel good. I laid down, I said, all right, the laundromat's 24 hours. Doesn't matter what time I get there. Not that I'm gonna, you know, do laundry in the middle of the night. But anyway, back to what I was saying about, I thought things were going, I was saying that things were going smoothly. 
What a great day. Things are going smoothly. And it's been a great day. So if it's just this one hiccup, it's fine. Um, but I was saying to myself, well, what could go wrong with the laundromat? Well, let me show you. I don't know if you could see that through the trees, but there is, see, there's the laundromat. There's a yellow vehicle there and, you know, something apparently happened and they've been digging and digging and digging and there's no cars parked in front of the laundromat or the thrift store or the nail place. And they all start like right here. And there's just too many cars for me to park in. Like I need room for it to get in, to get out. And, um, and I really didn't want to carry the laundry that far, you know? And I was planning to do all my bedding, but, uh, it's like they stopped, I think they stopped working, but I didn't know, I don't know if they're going to take those. I don't think they're going to take that machine out. And I don't know how much holes they made in the parking lot. So I'm trying to wait it out because it's only, it's like right, right at five o'clock. So it looks like they're all going for the day. So I was trying to see if once they leave the workers and stuff, will other people pull into the parking lot closer to the laundry? Unless it's all torn up and you can't really pass that area. So yeah, not really a big deal. I still really, I have enough clothes to make it another week. Or I changed my schedule to, it was one to eight and I changed my schedule to 12 to seven. So if I really wanted to, I could pop over to the laundry in the town I work in because they're 24 hours. And I mean, if I needed to and was desperate, um, So yeah, right now I have plenty of clothes, plenty of jeans. I'm not sure about the undergarment situation, but I've lost weight and this might be a good excuse to start replacing some. It's just the, the bottom undergarments that need to be uh, replaced. Um, yeah. Because I really wanted to take, what I wanted to do tomorrow was take a ride out to, and I don't know if I'm doing it, what I want to do tomorrow was take a ride over to this town that has a Goodwill. Because I've been into all these thrift stores, and we don't really have a big array of jeans. And I'm a jeans girl. I want jeans. So... I think I got one size eight last weekend. And so I'm on the hunt for more. This is where I'm going to say I miss one place in Florida called the Bully Thrift Shop, Thrift Store in St. Petersburg. They had so many jeans. They like tons of clothes to, to pick through. I love that place. And I used to avoid the... I would go to Goodwill, and they also have lots of great, great picks there. But sometimes it was just too many people, and this Bowley place is kind of out of the way. It's to a good cause that benefits the city and their people who experience, um, I believe, mental illness and homelessness. So... I'm not sure where Goodwill, you know, I'm not saying that I'm not going to shop Goodwill, but, you know, I have my doubts about where the money goes. <sighs> Anywho, um, so I wanted to, and it's like a, I think it's like maybe a little less than an hour away, but then I found a wild camping spot in that town, well, you know, probably the outskirts of town, in the National Forest. And from the reviews on iOverlander, it seemed like the road was um, graveled and 
even if it like there's one spot that's close to the road that I if no one else has I could take but if you travel a quarter mile in there's a creek so I kind of wanted to do that so I'm not sure I'm not sure where van life will bring me tomorrow and the next day but if I have to skip this week's uh, laundry, then so be it. I'm glad I almost pulled everything off the bed. And I was like, no, nope, let me wait till I get there. And so, yeah. And I was trying to see if there was a laundromat in the town I'm going to. Because I thought maybe on the way out, I can go there. And I have to remember that the days are short. And there is... I don't want to drive in the dark back from that town to this area on Saturday. Especially I don't know that area all that well. Um, I don't know that area at all. I don't want to, you know, have a... What do you call that? Altercation with the deer population here. Um, so that... That is on my mind. But uh, there's also a Walmart over there. I have to call because on I Overlander it's not listed. So just in case I chicken out on the wild camping and I just want to stay somewhere different. And maybe just check out the, the, the wild camping area. And if I chicken out that I don't want to stay overnight. Um, at least there's a Walmart there or something. But I could also leave like Sunday morning early because I have to be to work by noon. Um, did I finish that story? I changed my hours from noon to seven. It was one to eight. I'm just exhausted. I am so ex when six o'clock hits, I'm so exhausted. And I'm working with all these young people, which I might have mentioned in a, another video. So, um, what was my point? My point is, I'm just tired. And then I come into the van at 8 o'clock and I lay down and I, like, I sleep for an hour or nap for an hour. And then I have to make myself get up to walk the dog and then do my nighttime routine, which seems like pulling teeth because I'm so tired. So we started 12 to 7. I talked to the human resources person about all my issues and, you know, basically that I'm old, older, and I'm going through menopause and things aren't just... I'm emotional, I'm tired. So she understood and she's like, great, something to look forward to. But uh, so we compromised. She had to go talk to somebody and I got to keep the same days and the compromise because of the holidays, if I can keep, if I can do 12 to seven and then after the holidays, we'll revisit the, like what I really wanted was 11 to 6 but I also think 12 to 7 is better because I still get to take because now the light the sun rises earlier I'm up earlier and I can get ready earlier and I can bring bogey to the park earlier where uh before daylight savings time I was just tired till 8 o'clock and I couldn't get myself up And finally, I would leave around nine o'clock to take Bogey to the park, and we'd hang out there for until I had to work at one. But that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. It's really weird that I'm telling you guys all this. And I mean, I know when I watch Band Life people that I'm following, I like to hear all their everyday stuff and what challenges they have and what their day was like and and here I'm just like 
do people really want to hear me say this stuff? I don't want it to be like I'm complaining, but menopause is, you know, a B-I-T-C-H. All right, let's see what tomorrow brings. I'm going to figure out my next move. I keep looking over at the laundromat and the parking lot. And I don't know. I don't think it's happening tonight. So I guess it's just going to be YouTube and chill or Netflix and chill. All right, guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Good morning. Who are you? It is Friday, day two of my three days off. So I did not get to do my laundry last night. So I did let you know yesterday what my thoughts were on the rest of the weekend. I should have turned off my maps. I don't know if you could hear that. So it is raining today. I found a place in North Carolina, which it's an hour drive and that's good because I need to recharge my batteries, the house batteries. A nice long drive to North Carolina, recharge the batteries. Um, it's Franklin, North Carolina. And they have a Goodwill there. And they have a Walmart that I found on iOverlander. And it seems like you could stay there overnight if I decide that maybe I want to find a park there and walk bogey. So I'm going on an adventure to North Carolina. It is, uh, I think it's about 9 a.m. or a little after 9. But uh, yeah. Okay. See you guys in North Carolina. I wish I could like video the ride or some of the ride but I can't because I have to use my phone for the maps I don't know where I'm going but it is through the the national forest theirs is a different national forest I forgot the name already over here it's the Chattahoochee or Catahoochee and over there is the Nahala I think Nahala National Forest I will correct myself here if I'm wrong but uh yeah, so now I'll be driving through some of that national forest. All right, guys, see you in North Carolina. Hey, you guys, I just stopped on the way to the Goodwill in uh, Franklin, North Carolina. And this is the pull off on the side of the road. I had like people behind me and it's a steep, like 8% grade. So, there's like four cars behind me and I was downshifting on third and braking and so I pulled over to let them go and use the bathroom and here's the view. But we're almost there, just I think like 10 minutes more. Alrighty. So I did make it to the Goodwill, but the route to the Goodwill like, I feel like I've had enough of the mountains. I'm good with, like, I don't, you know, van life, eh. Mountains, eh. I'm good. I'm done. But at this point, obviously, there's no going back. And this is just this moment. It's not all the moments. All right. There's three ways to go. You know google suggests these three ways so of course you know you always take the quickest route i didn't know i'd be going through a mountain pass i knew there was going to be mountains and that it was going to be like you know a, a national forest but going through the mountain path like i didn't realize and this van like I got the brake issue fixed and I'm all happy go lucky let me go you know go do something different and these were like steep grades steep grades and 
I was riding my brake so much. I had some shake towards the end of the drive, like maybe I had like 15, 20 minutes left. And I was wondering why my, why the van was shaking when I braked, because I went on this overview, lookout view. Well, you guys saw that. And uh, there was a little bit, a little bit of a shake. And I'm like, uh, okay. So there was a few more grades of downhill and it was starting to freak me out because now the van's shaking when I'm pressing the brake. And at one point it was just, it just continuously shaked and I had to pull over. Thank God there was like a, a road on the one of the sides, like, cause we were like deep in the mountains and I was able to pull off on this little side not road, but like, you know, entrance of a road. And I called the mechanic and because when I got out, it almost felt like I popped a tire or something. That's how much it was shaking. And I got out, I looked at all the tires. I'm like, okay, but you could smell the burning you could smell the burning. So, obviously, I mean, now it, it occurred to me, all right, I'm burning the brake, brake pads, whatever. I called the mechanic and he talked me through what was happening and that just give it like 15, 20 minutes to cool off that there's no way I would have like killed my brake pads just on that ride because they had a lot of thickness to it when he saw them. Um, but it was terrifying and I'm so glad like, because at one point I was trying to stop the vehicle on a downgrade and I'm so happy there was nobody behind me because that could have been a freaking disaster. I still have 40 minutes to drive. I just pulled over, I took the longer way. I didn't go through the mountain pass. I Googled, I took the, I asked a couple that I saw when I went to the Goodwill. They said that that, you know, take this, this ride, this way's curvier, but not anything hilly. It is hills, but it's not like mountain hills. But now I'm driving and I feel like PTSD and every time I see a downgrade, I'm panicking on the road. So I pulled over just in case I've been braking too much. It's created a uh, little bit of a metal type of, I don't know, noise now when I brake. It's, you know, like a high pitched, Mechanic also said it's okay. It's the type of pads I have that they're most likely metallic and that I'll be okay. He's also texted me and made sure I got to where I was going. So that was nice. I should have stayed put today. But at the same time, I wouldn't I wouldn't have learned to make sure when I take a route what it's going to be like number one and number two that this van when I was talking to like I said the mechanic he's concluded that being that this van was pretty stationary in St. Pete um he probably he thinks that it doesn't have the heavy duty brakes like that is necessary for you know tackling these mountain areas or and for the weight of this vehicle anyway i don't know if i'm gonna like i don't want to be criticized i don't know if i'm gonna put this in the video but at the same time like there's you guys starting out, things for you to like, think about.
Do you have the right brakes in your vehicle? Check everything before you leave, especially where you're gonna be. Anyway, I know this was for me to learn because nothing, I'm gonna say nothing other than me being freaked out and terrified, <laughs> which isn't nothing, but I'm okay, so it's a learning, a learning curve. All right, I'm gonna let my van cool off, or at least the brakes or whatever, let sit here for a few more minutes and then continue on. Hi guys. It is the day after my traumatic experience. It's raining out today. Just a beautiful, overcast, gray, rainy day. My favorite. Yeah, so today, I guess, I had a good night's sleep, and when I got behind the wheel to drive today, I wasn't as, I wasn't at all triggered by driving. I don't know what else to call it. Um, yeah, I felt, it felt normal, regular, but yesterday for sure just felt like maybe I should have just stayed in North Carolina the one night to get over that trauma and fear of driving because the ride back was just just as traumatic dramatic as what happened on the mountain pass and i don't know that's dangerous for people that are driving behind me dangerous for me and um i don't know learning lessons just learning here Van is fine today, like, there's a minor squeakiness to the brakes. When, when I barely touch the brakes, they squeak a little bit, like, in the bottom one, I put my foot down, you know, to stop, it makes no sound. So, I am comforted, I guess not the word I'm looking for by the mechanic that everything's fine and that I can either stop in on Monday before I go to work or if I feel you know fine with how the van's driving then I can just wait till Thursday the next day off and bring it in then so anyway who's the cutest boy Bogey is. All right, guys. I should end this video here. I think I'm going to end this video here. So I'm sorry for the dramatics yesterday. But that is life. To leave it out. I don't know, doesn't feel right. So hopefully it helps someone else. If you have a heavy van, if you're gonna get a heavy van or a heavy RV before you take those mountain passes or go through the mountains in general, learn how to use, how to, you know, downshift and make sure that you have heavy duty brakes and rotors and pads and all that. So yeah, that's your lesson for this video. And mine. All right, guys, we will see you on the next video. Hey, Boogie. All right, he's busy. He's focused. Bye.